Hello, Internet. A friend of mine, kind of a while ago now, was like, yo, Ben, you should be making videos about the things you make, NuGet packages and, and other things. Um, and I don't know, having made recently the video about my Audio Convolver RPG Maker plugin, um, I thought, okay, let's find something else. Uh, so this will be much shorter. This is just a package I've made, also game uh, geared, uh, but not RPG Maker at all. This is a C-sharp library, uh, again, available as a NuGet package called Random Helpers. Uh, and it just does some basic uh, random things that you often want to do in games, like rolling a die, which having said that, I don't actually use that one a whole lot in my games because I'm not doing dice based, but rolling dice is a very common thing in many games and uh, you, know, you might want to do that. Uh, something that I use more, at least for the games I make, is this random next of a list. So, and, and you know, here's an example. You've got a bunch, you've got a list of, of some things, here's names, um, and I want to get a random one of them. Another thing that I often use a lot of, I use next bool. I'm just kind of surprised that random doesn't provide that by default. We've got next int and things or next float. Where's my next bool? So I add that as a convenience and I definitely use that for some things. Um, and next enum value is another one I like to use. So, you know, we're making a random character and we'd like to pull one of these random enum values to use. Uh, third times that doesn't work. So let me show you a practical example. This is a game that I have been working on and I'll put a link to it in the description. It's a browser-based game, um, no ads or, or, or anything. Um, I am working on monetization, but right now it's all free. Uh, so yeah, here we can see, hey, I'm generating a random vassal. These are our characters. I wanna pick a random name. This is an array, um, right? And so like the traditional way you might do that if you had a list is you say, I wanna get the names and here's my random number generator, and I'm gonna get a next up to the count of the names, right? This would be kind of the traditional way to write this. Uh, I find that really annoying, and to, to not just to type, but to read, it's like, wait, what's going on? Oh yeah, we're making a random number up to the maximum, right? Like this, this does not convey the intent. The intent is, I want a random name, and this is, it's a common enough pattern that, you know, I don't think it's really anyone is confused when they look at it, but, it's, it's a little bit of extra thinking to understand what's going on here. So let's simplify that away. Let's just say, give me a random name. Um, this is just the same thing. We have, you can see some portraits by species. Um, so pull out a random one. And then here's the enum value thing. We have random elements in this game, fire, plant, earth, ice, water, lightning, metal. And every time there's a new uh, character, we pull one completely at random. There's also astrological signs and natures, which are these personality traits. And here's where I think this does fall apart, depending on your use case. Um, it's not falling apart for me here. I find this great, uh, this even distribution, but what if you didn't want an even distribution? Or what if there were like, you know, some elements were, were more special and only, you know, certain characters had that element. You would no longer use this next enum value. You might start making like, you know, have some list of, uh, these are like common elements or something, uh, right? And then do your, I don't know, or whatever. You'd make a list and then you'd pull a random one out of this list. I don't know what I've typed here. Oh, do I need to make it a list What instead of an array? Whatever, you get the point. You might instead make a, a hard-coded list. But I would say until you need that list, just pull any random element, astrological sign, or nature, right, for the character. And so next enum value comes up for me a lot. And the way to do this by hand, we can see it inside the um, function, it's a lot more annoying. You have to get all the values, cast it to a list, pull the next one out. Um, it's much more cumbersome than the array example. So those, these two I use all the time. Pull a random element out of an array, pull a random enum value. I use those all the time. Um, and next bool. I use next bool. <laughs> I hope that's true. Yeah, here's one. Are you getting gold or iron? Apparently it's just a 50-50 chance. Really easy to reproduce with next int or, you know, next float, but I just, you know, every now and again you want to know, you just want a true-false value. The other ones are a little more specialized. So, and, and here's where I feel like I want to say as a caveat, uh, these are not uh, built for, with, with cryptographic security in mind. This is meant for kind of game purposes. So like, should you use random next string to make a secure password? Maybe not. Um, you might want to look at the random uh, number generator from the cryptographic namespace, I forget what that is, a system something cryptography, I forget. But, you know, there's a random number generator there that is of higher quality. So if you were looking for, um, you know, really secure stuff, I would say don't use this library. That's not what this library is intended for. And, and I have a big warning about that uh, on top. It's not what it's for. Um, so anyway, one of the other interesting functions, so we got random string. Okay. When would you use that? I don't know. But I threw it in there. I think one of the more interesting ones that I 
used for one particular game and have never used it since is this next percent bonus. Um, and I kind of described the use case here, but the use case I was having was that I had things that maybe, like suppose a character could deal, you know, three to five hit points. It was very small numbers, like um, like Mario RPG, right? The amount of damage you deal is very small. You're gonna, it's these very, I would say like easy to reason about numbers, right? Whereas you go to like a traditional JRPG and it's like, I'm dealing 3,289 damage, you know, some super specific large number. The advantage of super specific large numbers, or rather the advantage of very large numbers, is that a percent bonuses are very easy to apply, and you don't have to worry about a rounding error, right? If you do 15% more damage and you're dealing, you know, your base damage is some weird number, there's going to be some rounding that maybe means there is one point of damage you didn't get that you should have, right, in quotes. But if the number is very small, like 2 damage is your base, but you want a 15% bonus, well, how are you going to do that? You'll never see that extra bonus. And so what this function does, this next percent bonus thing, is that it says, okay, I'm going to turn that into a percent chance that you get the extra one. So, for example, let's just say you do one damage, and then you have a 15% damage bonus. Then what the game is going to do is say, okay, there's a 15% chance that you get plus one damage, right? 15% chance that now it's two. Um, but it also takes care of cases, suppose you're dealing... Uh, let's say 101 damage, right? It'll say, okay, 15% of 100, I can do that, plus 15 damage, but now we've got this one, so I'm gonna make it a 15% chance that you get another one, right? So it handles making sure that you don't lose your percent bonuses when you're dealing with small numbers. It's a very specific use case. I made this function for one particular game, um, and, and there's other ways to deal with this problem, right? Just use larger numbers, or maybe don't use percent bonuses. Maybe the fact that it adds this percent thing just really isn't appropriate for the game. So. I don't know, I make a big point of this function of like, look, I made it, and you can use it now easily, but just because you can doesn't mean you should, right? <laughs> Maybe there are other ways to solve this problem. Um, so anyway, that was a function. And then I have a basic shuffle method for arrays because that's not built in. And there's plenty of other arrays that do this, and you can find the Fisher Yates shuffle online. It's very easy to implement yourself. I mean, honestly, all of these functions are easy to implement yourself. Maybe this one is a little funky. Um, but the point is that they're here. They're all in a collection. They're all kind of geared toward making games. So if you're making games with random numbers, you might find this library to be useful. So that's it. Um, it's totally free. Uh, I have started putting my little coffee link on things. And if I'm being honest, that's part of the reason why I have started doing these as well. Uh, if you like this stuff, you can throw me a couple bucks, but absolutely feel zero obligation to do so. I use tons of open source stuff myself. Uh, Without giving the developers anything, you should feel free to do the same for my stuff. Just grab this library and, and use it if you want. Fork it. Do, do whatever. Do all the fun, all the fun open source things. Uh, so, yep, yeah, that's it. Um, I'll try and do videos for other little NuGet packages I've done, but you can find the rest of mine. I've, I've got several um, varying degrees of usefulness. <laughs> and I'll, but I'll try to make videos just for the useful ones. So, anyway, thanks again, and goodbye.